Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to my huge channel, everybody. Today is the day where we talk about the thing called style. And I was about to say we know this term since, I don't know, the evolution of mankind, but that's not the case. Actually, the word style or stylish exists since the 18th century. That means since the 18th century, we're being reduced to what we look like and if it's cool or not. Because at the end of the day, we usually use the term stylish to describe some sort of good taste, even though I'm, of course, the ambassador of not good taste. I hate the term good taste. There's no such thing as good taste. And we're not going to talk about good taste today. We're going to talk about how you can elevate the taste you already have, no matter what taste it is. That's the question of today. And there are certain things I think I might be able to help you with because I get a few questions every now and then of people asking me like, hey, I actually have no budget, but I want to improve myself. Like, how can I do it without spending too much? To be very honest, if you don't have certain things already in your closet, it will be not that easy, but there are very budget-friendly options we're going to talk about today. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that yet and you probably have not if you're one out of two people who are watching my videos. So I'm really grateful if you, if you subscribe or follow me on Instagram or my Discord chat, which is pretty amazing with a lot of fashion geeks around who are speaking high fashion. And sometimes also some random stuff, but usually really high fashion. So I'm not here to talk about the meaning of taste or its socio-cultural relevance or what is being perceived as beautiful, exciting or life-changing. Uh, it's too deep and we just want to enter a certain spot today. Taste is actually something if you visually take in, you take in it with your mouth, you take in it with your nose and all these senses that you have you use to kind of soak in a form of taste and I don't know what comes before like tasting with your tongue or smelling first or whatever it is maybe not even that important because the Swiss have a weird word to say that something smells good they say it tastes good they're, they're like schmeck good saying to somebody when they smell good like hey you taste good is also giving some Hannibal Lecter vibes that I am leaving the linguists to dive deeper in. But that's funny. So it, it's also kind of showing like how everything is connected with each other, like our taste buds with our smelling buds and also our eyes that feel kind of disconnected from these things here. But actually our visual eye is just another sense. And usually when we talk about style of fashion, we only think about our visual eye. We don't think of the rest of our organs, we also have the sense of feeling, you know? And all these senses play a very strong game all together to create the certain image that you want to create around yourself. So now that we cleared out the fact that these two square meters of skin are responsible for all the taste and beauty that you soak it into your body, we also need to build the fundament that you are not a mannequin, like you are not the person you see in a web shop, on e-commerce, on the streets, on Pinterest, on Instagram, on TikTok, wherever. You are not that person and just trust your gut and your personality. You're probably way deeper than the person you're trying to copy or get inspired by, like always trying to dig deep into yourself. That's why you need to be very aware of what your personality is like. And it's actually a fun thing to find that out in life. So first and foremost, I think I found like a very easy answer to this question, which is very literal and objective actually. So we're gonna be very literal and object specific, but I love it because that's the fun about it. First of all, I want to start with a very neglected item of fashion. You don't think about it that much, even though it's so close to your brain. And I know it's not the most subtle one maybe because you literally carry it on your head and yes, I'm talking about hats. Pieces of wool, cotton or any other material that form a certain silhouette and make the upper part of your head more interesting, I would say. Not that our faces are not interesting, but there is always a potential to, to excite here. I think the exercise with the hat is actually a pretty good one because it's daring. It's out of your comfort zone for sure. It's very, very visible. You can't really hide behind it, even if that's the purpose of some headgear, like to hide. but you're actually even more obvious that you're out there. I don't know what the main purpose, for example, of caps is. It's probably protecting you from the sun, but we see you're wearing a cap. So, so, so important and neglected by many. 
by too many and yes i have the uniqlo beanies as well and i have several other beanies but they are not the ones improving my aesthetic at all they're not the ones making me more interesting and when i say more interesting it's not because i want other people to like me it's because i want a current side guys appropriate reflection of my personality on my head and I should have that, I think. And you should have that too. There is a super wide selection of hat forms you can use to emphasize your personal style. I don't know, there's a French Baker Boy hat, the Fisherman Beanie, or if you want to raise into Papacy, there is also a little Pope hat right now that I love, love, love much, because I kind of look like a Pope now. Um, there are many interesting forms right now that you can use to increase your wished appearance. Something wider and higher will give you a more avant-garde or artisanal look. But also the revamp bakery hat from Yoji is a great way to feel your Frenchness in a new Japanese way. This is the kind of feature I like the very most because you have the chance to take something classical and you turn it like you have this felted cashmere. Again, one of my favorite fabrics when it comes to head gear or wear. Uh, I know Josanda is using it a lot. Of course, these pieces are not on the lower end of... Um, price policies usually but I saw already that tons of them are on sale and I think because people are weirded out by them you be not you find them on sale I think it's amazing you can wear the French Baker hat without maybe the typical Ruslan Baginski style form but the Yoji form and I'm not even a Yoji girl or anything but I really liked the form of the like diffusion between like Japanese-ness, French-ness that also the designer is kind of like torn between and it's amazing. So if you feel like, for example, you, you're not too shy to, to wear a hat on your head, go for this model, for example. Um, if you're more into the beanie kinds, which I'm also slightly addicted with, there is a brand called Frankenberger. I think they do the best kind of beanies if you like to look like a little hobbit, you know. It looks weird. I know some people are weirded out by it, but I just don't like beanies that are like on my head. Maybe it's also because I don't have the perfect head shape. So, you know, you need to learn with these kind of things. Probably when I was a baby, my mom left me on my back all the time, even though you need to turn babies around so they have a beautiful round head. I don't have this head. So I'm not trying to wear any cashmere beanies that are emphasizing this beautiful head form. Overall, I'm very happy that I have a functioning hat, I, I believe. So I like to have a beanie that is a bit slightly longer and creating a different look that looks slightly unnatural. So check out on these. You don't have to go crazy with the Yoji or Totem or, or the other brands. Like You can go also easy on a beanie, but you can use this material to create a new feature, like a new form on your body without being like outrageously crazy. Like It's okay, you don't have to go full force. So just try to reflect your personality. like. Baker Boy, it can be even a beret style. Number two of very important item, accessory, I don't know which category it actually is, of improving or reflecting your style in a better way. It's an olfactory experience. I'm speaking about perfumes. So smell is so important. That's sometimes even the feature people recognize before they recognize your personal style or your voice. This does not mean try to seduce people around town, go with the strongest perfume so people are aware of your existence before they're aware that you're literally a person. That's not what I mean. But the perfume is something about your look that you just cannot see with your eyes. So it's another sense that we need to integrate here. And I feel like, especially if you're younger, and I mean, I remember when I was in school, like I did not invest all my money in like niche fragrances. Like, no, I love Jill and Sun, like, that was my personality when I was 16. No, but there are, especially now, I don't know if it's because of COVID, but like fragrance culture is so current, everywhere, available. You can go into a department store and get inspired by so many fragrances. You can, of course, also go into a niche perfumer, which I would always recommend because I know the price tag is a different one. It's actually sometimes not even that much of a difference, but it's not about that. The conception of the ingredients of niche fragrances is way more refined than the commercial fragrances we see the ads most of the time of. Which doesn't mean that they're bad. They're usually good and usually in fragrance it's not the style, but if a fragrance is very successful it's usually not that bad. It's, it's not like fashion items in my opinion. So I would say start with a department store and then you walk all your way up into one niche perfume. Maybe it's way too heavy for you because usually they are a bit more heavy because they have like 
I don't know, oud and musk and vetiva and everything included. But you know, your personality is so colorful. You should also be able to reflect that with a fragrance. You should also smell like you're very colorful. Or I don't know, if you're a very serious person, you should have something maybe a bit oudy. Or if you're a very flower power girl, you should smell like flowers. You know, you should smell like rose. And so I'm really encouraging you guys to go into the stores and check on fragrances. My friend who is a crazy perfume geek just gifted me a little tester of imaginary authors never heard about it in my life amazing perfume and what you can find in the bigger department stores usually is stuff like Frederick Mal and Serge Lutens amazing for men specifically so go have a look at it and upgrade your look with a fucking good smell coming to number three uh, my favorite thing probably and I think I can be something of an ambassador about that because I think for three years now I'm doing videos and it's almost always included a good pair of wool pants and it's weird this is in my list because if you follow this channel I'm 100% sure you're already owner of that wool pant I just wanted to remind you especially in winter how essential a good fitting pair is and how functional it can be I have I think three good ones and I wear them for about two or three years now and I bought these all on sale somewhere on any kind of online shop. So make sure you find that good one. And a good wool pant rescues you in all sorts of situations. At work, it has your back. Fine dining, it has your back. You are going to party, it has your back. And I'm speaking out of experience here. It's so functional, of course, a good pair like of cargos or like of functional jeans is also amazing. But I feel like a wool pant is so anonymous because it looks like nothing it's usually like navy or black and many people cannot even recognize the shape or differentiate them they're there but they're also not there like jeans are very striking you know blue is a bright color even if you go for salvage denim or whatever it's just like very visible but wool pants are just like you can turn it into everything and a good wool pant and you should touch it you should get a feeling for wool fabrics even if it's not 100 percent wool but it can elevate and grow you up and not in an aging manner, but just like make you grown up so quickly, you cannot imagine. So you, you go to your next store that has a good curation of pieces, you check all the pants and then you check if they say them because you, you need to have this. You will always look a bit more elevated, a bit more chic. And I don't say be a chic person and run around with your pipe or anything. It's more elevated, it's good quality and it looks good. Number four, number four. And this is an item that I usually don't crave to search for. I actually hate it because I think it's overpriced. I think it's not functional when I like it. And I can buy so much beautiful ready to wear pieces with this because I'm a ready to wear girl. Like if you ask me, I will always choose clothes but i'm speaking about a good handbag and no matter if you're a girl or a guy you need a good handbag and in best case you have like two or three so they don't look knocked out after the first year that you wear them i tell you this with a lot of sincerity and honesty and i don't want to be that person but i judge people by their handbags like i literally I'm, I don't look at your clothes like you can have a functional parka you can have like weird sneakers that I don't know of anything I will not judge you but I will judge you according to your handbag because this has so much about your personality and that's why it's so important that you make the right choice I mean it's just the bag says so much about you it's it shows me what's your view on life what are your values and what's your goal uh, you love logos ciao you like ill stitching Ciao. You like bad quality, bad leather, faux leather on handbags, on most of the handbags. Ciao cacao. It, it just does not elevate anything and big names never look good. Like overall big names never give you anything. Why should I carry somebody else's big name around me? Like you are there too. Like why should you wear somebody's name? Like why should your bag say Michael Kors or Dior in the biggest letters? Why do you want another name to overshadow you and your personality you don't want this like you want a bag that is functional beautiful and is reflecting your personality and probably you're like a little flower so you want something that is like a bit hideous but like super beautiful when you look at it 
okay and there are bags that are doing this so you can get one of those bags and i'm not talking here about the aesthetic like you can go from dark metal pierced deformed handbags to little pochette bags like little satin little sacks you know you have your pearls around it it's not about the aesthetic like that's your personality i don't care about this but you need to care about quality form and color like these three things are very important if you want to make a good choice for a handbag so i really encourage you to also go a bit nuts when it comes here to the colors and you don't even have to go crazy it can be like an ox blood or khaki or like a dark orange like you have a lot of options to just improve the used to aesthetic that you have so overall just try to have bags without big logos uh, i really like the le mer croissant bag it's a great option that is very spacious and minimal but it's very very minimal so this needs to be your aesthetic uh mariam nasser zade mm6 they have like interesting tote lighter bags if you like just like the tote look and if you want to go more luxury i i really like the ones from Giazanda, of course or ferragamo or magella like these are like my favorite handbag brands number five hair and yes i do care a lot about hair so this point is actually very personal um so 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 personal i know how attached some people are to their hair and i actually never really got it just one thing do something with it just dare to do something it is literally growing back like it will be there again in three months you can just go a bit crazy and it's perfect because it's low on a budget uh, you, maybe your hairdresser, it depends on him. If you want to dye it, you can do it yourself or you can go to a hairdresser that you know. But it's really the perfect way for me to show your personality uh, and how much you care about yourself. Like my hair in middle school was like until my hips almost and I was like braiding it and had like wavy hair and was all cute and stuff. And throughout the last 10 years, I think I like gradually cut it shorter and shorter and shorter without recognizing and this is even the long version now and I found it's really interesting because it's really like a path I found my perfect hair length that I feel the most comfortable with which is actually like two three centimeters shorter than this one but it's winter the only reason I'm keeping it right now is it's cold it's nice under a hat no but what I see very often when I see that a person is trying to change their hairstyle or using products I don't know why products have such a bad image uh, because I think a lot of people think they will lose their hair when using it. You just need to wash out the product like every night and then nothing happens. I lose a lot of gel and whatever in my hair and I also use a lot of leave-in conditioner so my hair stays soft and well maintained so you don't have to lose your hair when you, when you use hair product. And I see a lot of people with great potential. I'm just like let me put some wax in it the hair just shows perfectly how you can leverage your style without any other products of brands it's just your own hair uh, and for it's absolutely okay to get inspired by runways or big brands but it's something you can do by yourself and it has a very big impact really giving you fresh energy to to change up something it is okay to experiment and i think it's a beautiful way of showing it can be a teeny tiny pony it can be a huge long pony like so many options don't neglect hair like this upper piece overall like don't neglect it next big point on the list are accessories and one thing for sure whenever i want to change something and about the visual appearance of my style and look a bit more interesting i just wear accessories and it's so easy and again, it's something more budget friendly. I don't say get yourself a coat that is like outrageous and crazy. It's mohair mixed with alpaca and wool. Like, no, nice to have though, but no, it's just teeny tiny accessories. I just bought like for 100 euros these Magella gloves from Hughes, and I think they retail still for like 500 in their store. It's a beautiful, super pigmented and intense turquoise. And whenever I wear them, uh, I, I showed them in my um, whole like video, I don't know, I called it fall pickups, exactly. In that video, you can see it on detail. It just makes every look, look so much more interesting in its gloves, but it can also be jewelry, like bijouterie or whatever. And when I say I hate accessories, I of course just mean a certain style of accessories because I think it doesn't give anybody anything. Like nobody is benefiting of this look. And with that, I mean the tons of little gold necklaces and bracelets and rings that all 
get into each other and they already look a bit rusted i believe you can do better i know you can do better than those accessories or claire stuff i loved claire's i know it's cute you know the unicorn the dolphin i love it it's super cute are you cute is that an important feature of you to be cute then don't wear it don't get it but that doesn't mean there is not other cute stuff that is part of your personality that you can actually buy it. Try, for example, to go with jewelry in a, a bit more natural form if you have a bit more of a sophisticated style. Something small but impressive is usually what I like to go for. Uh, that's why I love, for example, Celine and Jazanda jewelry. But of course, that's just fashion jewelry. So you pay like a lot of money for jewelry that is actually not jewelry. It's just fashion jewelry. But what I mean is like, look at their shapes, like it's usually big and bold shapes, but very minimal still in the way they're created. There are not a lot of stones in them, uh, like not artificial ones, not too much sparkle, even though I'm addicted to sparkle, by the way, rhinestones. I love the Balenciaga earrings. I think they have the best fashion jewelry uh, quality uh, you pay, but I wear them like for one and a half years in Australia. So I really like their rhinestone earrings. Again, I like rhinestones because it's a good break with your very uniform look, like which I usually have. But if you go for the more natural forms, you can just get a single piece from anywhere. It just needs to be something a bit striking, something interesting, because it's just one piece. So it needs, it's important that we have here like a well-constructed and exciting piece that's very important when you when you select the necklace for example Alighieri has a fish necklace that i like this one i specifically like and lemaire has these tentacle light uh, earrings like sometimes like the weird fashion like normal fashion brands have like very interesting jewelry like lemaire has what i saw it looks really like tentacles or like a bit like seaweed or something coming down your ears that is interesting and it's on sale and i know that lemaire also has this um Thing. like it's I think it's porcelain or something like a long necklace I think long necklaces are back right now even though I like really tight tight ones as well but what I mean is you can elevate again a very simple look with like a long necklace you know if, just imagine like an interesting pair of earrings an interesting hat and you wear like your everyday coat and every, whatever under it and it's immediately upgraded and upgraded like you know I will not define it anymore but upgraded like in a beautiful manner like it's more you because you're not generic and you should not look generic. So coming to the seventh and last point that I think is very important to upgrade your look. And I know that's a problem for a lot of people and that's why I wanted to put it here because again, it's something very general actually overall. I'm talking about the good pair of leather shoes. And I know that's a huge scope like H&M is producing leather shoes and Edwards is producing leather shoes and John Love too and Burby too, like everybody produces leather shoes. And I don't speak specifically about loafers or boots. Like it's not even the style of shoe that is important to me. But what is important is that you find a model and I'm definitely excluding sneakers here because sneakers are shoes for comfort mainly. So their main purpose is not really to improve your style like crazy like of course you can say i like my raf simmons comedy garçon version they're super special i wear salomons whatever but the main purpose of the shoe is still more comfort than creating a new eclectic piece to your wardrobe and leather shoes are also again another form of stating your degree of elegance that you can have it's a sophisticated shoe it's an elegant shoe it's always chic you're always chic and again you have this shoe that you can go to dinner to that you can go to work to and that you can do anything else with like you can maybe even party with your good leather shoes and this is something i learned pretty late because i'm a person that like after ready to wear i like crazy shoes like all my shoes have like weird things around them and i just figured i have like two pairs of shoes that i can wear daily and that was a struggle and i didn't feel comfortable wearing my sneakers because I was like, okay, that's not elevating. I'm not benefiting of the shoe right now. It's just giving me comfort and that's not what I aim for. And the crazy ones are unwearable because they're either too high, to sandals, like boots with cutouts, like weird, weird stuff that I don't regret. Like I, do, I will never make this. I regret that I bought this video, but you need a good pair of leather shoe that goes with your wool pants, with your coat, with your raincoat, Whatever it is, you can you can go for brands like Heroi, you can look at Acne Studios, they have also great leather shoes. There's a very wide range. Specifically now, I feel like we have a lot of like 
sporty looking good leather shoes um i like a good pair of loafer like i really love loafers and if you have a dime to spare you can of course get some john lobs i think you can go super classic i know it's hard to find something um in a, in a in a good price point especially since they don't sell so much they are like very popular shoes that are usually like the good ones but there's so many also local brands that i'm not even aware of i know that there are a lot of spanish brands that do shoes so trying to really invest in a good leather shoe that you can wear perfectly in summer autumn winter it helps you to elevate your style i'm not talking about the fact that you should appear more serious but you will look more put together in a good way without speaking about good taste like i don't mean you should look like quite luxury like that's not the point it can also look like a pair of dogs it needs to reflect your personality but we need to have a pair of shoes that is perfectly combining everything we have from our hat to our jewelry to our knitwear to our wool pants that we have this that we're closing this look ending this look with an amazing high quality feature so look that you have good leather look where it's manufactured look how it's soon look how thick your sole is there's so many things to be careful about when buying leather shoes and the level of comfort of course is always very important try to have a good look here so these were my seven points so everybody i hope you like this video i do believe that you can always elevate your style me as well um I, I i need to be a bit more out of my comfort zone sometimes and i think you guys as well and these are the products i always think about the most when i'm like okay i need to change something i need to elevate something to where you're going too boring again you're going too easy on yourself so I hope this helped you don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and my previous videos i also have a discord chat which is pretty amazing so i will leave the link down below uh, as long as i leave the links you should you should try to get in it's amazing a lot of fashion fans there that uh, that that share like different topics with each other uh, follow me on instagram or also on tiktok i know i know it's weird but i'm there so see you to the next one